Good afternoon everyone, this is Stole You Sweet Roll coming to you with another build tutorial. In today's video, I'll be covering how to build my Tudor Cottage. This includes how to blueprint and stack post anywhere, along with the merged Tudor style walls and brick underpinning. I'll also cover how to lower and float a roof above the contemporary porch to build a traditional A-frame roof over the porch. We'll also cover how to partition off non-standard sized rooms to get the most out of our tiny floor space, and how to build a very unique interior ceiling that is sure to set your camp apart from the rest. There's a lot involved in this little build, so without further ado, let's get started. To start things off, we'll need to lay out a 2x3 foundation like so, but before we get going, you'll need a few materials, mainly the contemporary build set, brick walls, and vault catwalks. We're going to start off by placing in our underpinning in the areas that it will be visible. To do this, we're going to use catwalks to snap the half walls in place. You'll need either the barn, warehouse, or contemporary set for this, as they're the only ones that will allow a foundation to snap on top of them. Follow along as I build the underpinning around the foundation. I'll check back once we're ready to move on to the next step. Like all builds, it all comes down to the proper build order. At this point, if you want to add in a chimney, now is the time to find a place for it and build it. Look up my chimney tutorial if you don't know how to build one. For the next step, we need to double wall the entire perimeter of the foundation. This will be the base layer for our first floor Tudor walls. Back to the build order again. We need to take a second to build the stairs and the wall against them. Here's a little time saver that I didn't think of at the time. Did you know you can tie a quarter catwalk to the interior side of the wall and snap a doorway to the catwalk instead of going through all this hassle moving floors and deleting walls and whatnot? It's funny the stuff you catch in the editing room. Now, let's go ahead and make a quarter wall using some floor decor. What you use in your build is up to you, but I'll be using floor safes in this example, as they're easy to stack and maneuver. Whoa, sudden time shift. Looks like somebody had to make a steel run. Now, let's replace the sounder wall. Go ahead and double wall it even though I didn't just now. Hindsight's 2020. You'll see why later on in the build. Moving on. Here's a little trick that I learned from Mr. Church. We need to make a blueprinted post so we can cover the corner gaps of the cottage. Go ahead and snap two half posts in a stack to this foundation and snug a rug next to the stack. Next, you just need to blueprint the rug and the stack, and then you're set to build post anywhere you need without snapping points. Once again, thanks Mr. Church. For 
For the next step in this process, we're going to be filling the corner gaps with the posts from the blueprint that we just created. Now it's time to snap in the outer layer of walls for the Tudor walls on the first floor. Just like the Shoji walls, we're going to snap a foundation to the side and slide the foundation out to where it aligns to the middle part of the outer wall's side profile. Next, we just have to snap off of this foundation and use the barn doorways to snap in the outer wall. We'll be repeating this process on all four sides of the house. Now that we've got our outer walls layered, it's time to move back inside and prepare the foundations to snap in the floating wall that will separate the kitchen and bathroom. In order to do this, we'll need to shift some floors around so we can slide a foundation into place to use as a snapping point for our bathroom wall. But before we snap in our intersecting wall, we need to build the wall to the other side first. Once we've got our measurements sorted, we'll need to build any upper floors or roofs that will be intersecting as well. Then, we can build our doorway and replace the foundations. Let's take a second to check the placement of everything and be sure that the rotation of the floors is matching as well because it will be difficult to resolve after the next step. It's now time to start finalizing the look of the underpinning and the walls by using the replace option. We'll start by replacing all of our barn half walls to brick. It's easiest to do so from the top. Now, to get that Tudor look, we'll be changing the triple stack of walls from inside to out. On the inner layer, you'll use contemporary walls. In the middle, you'll use brick. And on the outside, you'll use contemporary once again. You'll repeat this process for all of the walls. Next, we'll be moving on to the interior. This is where things are going to get a little complicated. First off, let's go ahead and replace the interior walls to the ones that we're going to use in the final build. And while we're at it, we'll build a shack wall that we're going to break to make a wooden post and threshold to separate the kitchen from the living room.
Now, let's go upstairs and begin snapping in the half walls to make the half tutor walls. To do this, we'll be snapping directly to the full walls below. Do take care not to make mistakes here, because any walls snapped to the outermost wall will become codependent on the full wall for support, due to them not being tied to a foundation or upper floor. Once you place the first layer, you'll have to break them to place in the next layer, and the layer after that. Moving on, we're going to start on the ceiling for the living room by snapping in a slanted roof here. We're going to be floating it using the replace function. Once the roof is floated, we're going to snap a slanted wall to the side of the roof. Sadly, some footage did not record and there's a bit of a jump coming up. You didn't miss much. What's missing is me snapping a roof in to stand on above the slant we just built. And I started on the Tudor top arches. But don't worry, we're going to cover them completely in this video. As you can see, I've already got two out of three layers already built here. The top arches work a lot like the half walls did. But in this case, we're using brick arches and the replace option to flip the middle arch using the log building set. Once again, Pay close attention to where you are snapping in the walls because the outer layer will lock together once you snap to it. Once you've layered in the arches, go ahead and use the replace option to change them to their final state. The order from inside to out goes brick to brick, then contemporary. Now we're going to do the same thing with a few of the half walls. The inner wall doesn't matter much as it's going to be wallpaper, but the middle wall has to be brick and the outer one needs to be contemporary. Move it on. I know this build seems to be all over the place, but so is my mind. Let's go ahead and Build the Tudor arch that is opposite the first arch we built. Same process as before, though here, you'll see why we needed to build that inner wall on the foundation on the other side of the steps that I didn't build earlier in the video. You have to have the inner wall to build the top arches properly, and in order to do that, we need a snapping point. Now we're going to add in a half wall above the base of the stairs to neaten the transition to the lower ceiling above the living room. To do this, we'll use vault catwalks.
At this time, we can place the roof and build the wall beside the stairs all the way to the ceiling. We're getting closer to finishing the main structure of the build. It's time to build the remaining arches and button up the roof and ceiling. It's pretty simple stuff, so I'll shut up for a few minutes and I'll be back when it's time to build the porches. Okay, let's build the porch. This is fairly easy. What we're going to do is snap the porch in and then snap two foundations to the front of the porch. Next, we'll delete the one in the middle and then we'll freehand the height of the foundation down so that our roof will align perfectly with the lower portion of the contemporary porch roof. Next, 
We'll need to build a roof over the porch and then float it using the replace option. Now that the roof is in, we need to put in the arches. Snapping from the lowered foundation, we're going to snap a foundation back where we deleted the one before. Next, we'll use a half wall to position two slanted roofs against the porch, and then we'll use the roofs as snapping points to build the arches. Since the arches have collision with the porch, we need to move each porch out of the way in order to snap the arches in. Once the arches are in, you can move the porches back and use the replace option to delete the roof pieces from the bottom of the arch and then we're ready to button everything up. Now, all that's left is to build the back porch and to add the wallpaper and change out the floors. That came together pretty well, and now I leave the furnishing up to you. There should be a decent amount of budget remaining to really fill this place up. Go crazy with it. These small builds lend themselves really well to decorations. On another note, if you want to do a cleaner version, you can always add white wallpaper to the middle walls. Also, if you want to use the windowed half walls, you'll need to use the white wallpaper for the half walls as well, as there is no windowed brick half wall. That was the trade-off I made to get the stucco look, but you're free to do whatever you want. It's your build now. And with that, I think it's time to say goodbye. If you like what I'm doing here and you want to help out the channel, give this video a like and a comment down below. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell icon so you don't miss future build videos and tutorials. As always, I want to thank everyone for all of your support, so until next time, this is Stole Your Sweet Roll signing off. Have a wonderful day and happy building.